Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. So today we are starting a very special project, something completely different that you haven't seen on this channel, a podcast, a special type of podcast, completely dedicated to tape. But we will, we will get there. Before starting, I, I would like to introduce my co-host, because this is not going to be an interview or just a single video where I talk. No, we're going to be two people. I'm oh, sorry, I have to always do this, not this. Uh, two people discussing about various topics with different experience. And the overall result should be interesting. You'll tell us. Okay, so let's start presenting my co-host, which is Karim Kukru, which is the pseudonym of Gianpaolo Kukuru. And he has a very special background. So uh, he is, first of all, a musician, a composer, but also a record producer and sound engineer. What else? He is a fantastic drummer of the Italian rock band The Zen Circus, which I highly recommend go around in YouTube and Spotify or wherever you listen to music. Hopefully not Spotify or for watching this. <laughs> and try to listen to something. So according, for example, to a very famous website here in Italy, uh, rocket.it, Karim is considered one of the best 20 Italian drummers of all time. Enough said. He is also the singer and the guitarist of his own project, his own band, La Notte dei Lunghi Cortelli. He collaborated with several artists and bands around the world, including Violent Femme, uh, Kim Deal of Pixies, uh, Jerry Harrison of Talking Heads, and clearly several Italian bands. So let's see our co-host. Here he is. Welcome, Karim. <laughs> Hi to everyone. You... You are too kind. Your words are too kind, really. I am. It's the truth. It's the truth. I mean, uh, it's it's your incredible curriculum and much, much more, which probably is going to come out in the following episodes. Because remember, you guys, this is not going to be one episode. This is a series, a whole podcast, which is going to last for several episodes. So what can I say? Thank you so much. It's such a, an honor to be here. I'm a big fan of your YouTube channel. We I, <laughs> we talk about it so much uh, in those last weeks. And uh, what can I say? Uh, I like, I really like your way, your approach to the analog world. And maybe that's why we are here together to talk and to discuss in, the, in this uh, podcast. And I'm so happy to join this podcast. Thanks again. No, thank you. Thank you, Karim. And I'm just someone uh, who lo loves who has a great passion for music, hi-fi, analog gear. You're a true artist. In fact, I want to highlight once again, you guys, uh, Karim is going to bring a very special perspective to this podcast. And that is why I deeply believe in this project. Because with his background uh, as a composer, musician, an expert on tape, in fact, I forgot to say clearly that he is an, a, a huge expert of tape, and not only, he is the mastermind behind the label Dirt Tapes, which we uh, presented a few things here on this channel. And when I presented stuff here on this channel about Dirt Tapes, I didn't know Karim at all. <laughs> so this was com something completely new. And Karim asked me, please don't talk about Dirt Tapes, because otherwise it's going to seem like a commercial, like an ad that we're promoting something. We're not promoting anything. No, we're doing this, both of us, just for passion. I want to highlight this is important. So what I was saying that Karim is going to bring this very special perspective because he knows a lot of stuff. He's producing cassettes. He's making own, doing the master, painstaking masters one after the other. Okay, I don't, I don't want to say too many things, but it is a special person that we have here together, and he's going to give a lot to this series. Okay, so let's say two words of the project itself, <laughs> clearly, of the tape dialogue. So what are we going to do in the next following months, probably? Yes. 
everything. I mean, we're going to touch every type of, of uh, argument, topic, subject related to tape. Cassettes, reel-to-reel tapes, the diseases, uh, the different types of restoration processes. I have to read because there's so many things. VHS, DAT, pre-recorded, self-recording, uh, remixing, um, magnetic tape issues, uh, everything. I mean, a lot yes. of stuff. Yes, yes. Maybe, maybe the big trouble was too many, too many things to talk. <laughs> we we, <laughs> we talked uh, we talked uh, last week, and uh, it was so hard to choose uh, the way to start because there are so much things to talk about. So up to you. True, true. In fact, we said okay, we're going to present the project clearly, but we want to leave you. We want to discuss at least one uh, main topic, which could be more of regarding the philosophy. The question is, why tape in the 21st century? What are the reasons? Do you want to start off? Yeah. Uh, maybe the first answer is uh, because uh, fantastic things never die. And uh, I know it, it could sound like uh, maybe too reductive as, as description, but um, uh, I think that nowadays we are living in a very peculiar world. Things are going uh, on in a very, very weird way, and uh, the speed of life is very is incredible. And uh, we listen to a lot of music. Uh, technology goes on, and then uh, often we got nothing in our hands. And uh, I think that in, in the last 10 years, this second wave around tapes, but not, not only tapes, analog world, vinyl, and uh, now the CDs, now there is a, <laughs> maybe a, a second wave of CDs. Maybe uh, I'm asking why. And um, I got so many things in my mind and uh, I... I started looking people around me and uh, a lot of young people and with their tapes, uh, uh, there is a sort of community around the uh, uh, worldwide community. And uh, I remember the, the words uh, 18 years old uh, told me a month ago, uh, he didn't know what audio cassette were incredible. And uh, <laughs> And he but he, started, got, he was interested, though. Yeah, it, it was interesting because uh, uh, he saw that on uh, Stranger Things. Uh -huh, well, uh, okay, of course. So, uh, <laughs> those pop culture elements. And uh, he was on Google typing. And uh, he didn't know how they sound. But not the sound quality. How they sound. Of they, course, of uh, course. So, he started to join this world. And uh, then he stopped listening music just on Spotify and, uh, and Tidal or Cobuse, what the hell. And uh, he started with cassettes, then vinyl, then CDs. And in one year, uh, he, he, he put his, uh, his feet in this world. And uh, I, I'm talking about it because he is an, is an example of what's happening now and uh, what's the passion behind the analog world. And, uh, Absolutely. you know, somebody could say it's a trend. It's, uh, ah, I, I got a vinyl, I got a tape, I can have a great content for my Instagram page. And uh, yeah, for sure, uh, some people could uh, approach this world in this way, but there is so many things behind. And uh, like you say, here's a lie, and here's going to be trained. And uh, once you start listening uh, to something uh, like uh, you can't touch and uh, you can live in a sound system, in a complete line, in a sound system, and not just on your cell phone. And, well, this is not a war against digital and against swimming, no, no. I have I have titles. I when I of travel, course. I travel so much. I use every day, but it's a new perspective. It's not just about trend. It's just about passion and how you can live things. And uh, I think that this second wave has a soul to me. 
it's not just a uh, trend, uh, histogram stuff to pick contents. Uh, ah, this is my vinyl, this is my new tape. Uh, there is so many things behind it to me. True. And it is true that thanks to what you were saying, just showing your, your, your record collection started everything for the, for the vinyl resurgence, for the, uh, the physical resurgence, we could say. Clearly, we, has, we have to thank also the Guardians of the Galaxy, Stranger Things, and things like that. But then, I mean, people did find something interesting. They, they, they just didn't stop to get the tape of uh, someone they saw in, in, in 13 um, rules, whatever, I don't remember, 13 words, whatever it's called, another series who, who gave great attention to tape. But afterwards, they did, understood there, were, there was something interesting there. There was quality. There was something more to discover. So absolutely, that is fundamental, and, and it's incredible to, to hear that someone that is only 18 starts to f explore this and finds you. In Italy, who are who is but doing it's not the only great one. cassettes? I know. It's not, it's not the only one. And uh, I think that uh, it's discovering one thing. It's the time you put inside the thing that uh, so many times gives life to that thing. And uh, we're living a life where uh, that kind of uh, behavior uh, is disappearing. Uh, because the life is changing, is evolution, and uh, the time you give to an object, to a cassette, the time you spend for making a mixtape, uh, well, it can take hours, hours of life, uh, and uh, <laughs> if you do that, you can discover so many things. And uh, I start to listening cassette in 1989. I was uh, seven years old. I was born in 1982, and I never stopped listening to cassettes. And uh, it was hard with a big drop of 2001, 2002, because no. everything changed, everything. And uh, I remember that uh, audio cassettes were sold uh, in kilos. <laughs> <laughs> um, that happened to the vinyl too, but in uh, in a different way because uh, the drop uh, of uh, of the cassette was. Uh, just a snap of a finger. I know, I know. And so uh, I continued to to buy cassettes in uh, other territories, and mainly in Japan, in North Africa. There's a huge and, culture there, yes. And uh, it was a world that was so different. Uh, the e-commerce was not like nowadays. And so I remember that I... I I bought a stock of uh, 500 cassettes in 2004, and uh, I found uh, treasures. <laughs> uh, Frank Zappa, uh, Captain Beefheart, and uh, the residents, uh, a lot of SST and Discord tapes. And now, I think nowadays, uh, uh, it's so hard to find those uh, tapes with, in mint condition. And so uh, when I think uh, uh, the way I found those cassettes, I found those cassettes, it's incredible. And how the world changed. <laughs> yes. And in fact, I'm, one of the things I wrote down when we, I was thinking about this episode is that tape is part of our culture in the way you just said. But also we have to remember that practically the vast majority of records that we own, that we know, that we love of the past century were recorded on tape. And this is something that sometimes we forget, maybe. I like, I'm sure people who have 18 years or 16 or 20, they don't even know. I mean, that all those, the, those incredible things they saw, for example, I don't know, Queen, when they went to see the, the movie, because you need a bioptic, now Elvis, all that is on tape. Yes, great digital transfers may be done and hope, I mean, that's something positive so we can still enjoy them when the tapes are not going to be there and we're going to talk about this in the, in the following episodes. So that's something absolutely fundamental. Uh, something else I, I wrote down, for example, is um, the recording experience itself because uh, you were talking about pre-recorded. 
I'm not a huge fan of pre-recorded, and maybe you're gonna you're gonna help me to change because uh, on the phone you were telling me, for example, there are there are special releases in the 1970s, very high quality pre-recorded cassettes. But I love to record my own music, high quality digital or analog music on cassette on a quality tape, and there the experience is just incredible. Do you, do you record now? Do you like to record? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... You know, um, what can I say? Uh, the tape is, uh, if you got a great sound system, exactly. if you got a great cassette mm. deck, if you have a good Nakamichi, a good take, a good, uh, during the 80s and the first uh, years of the 90s, great cassette decks were produced. Uh, and you have a complete line, a good sound system, a good pre, uh, a good speakers with amplifier and uh, you can have a great sound. Before I talk about uh, 80s Deutsch gramophone, uh, I have, here I have some, maybe Schubert and uh, Beethoven and Rachmaninoff maybe. Um, during wow. the 80s, there were a lot of chrome used. Uh, then we all know what happened and then why the chrome after some years. Uh, about the pollution during the production than uh, the license to pay because it was, uh, we will talk about it in the, in the next episodes. But I mean, during the hate is, uh, uh, Deutsche Gramophone is an example, but not the only one. There are, there are a lot of labels at a lot of education plans, for example, in Europe, in Holland and uh, in Deutschland. Uh, you know, they had duplication plant lines that were incredible. Uh, the soul they put in the, in the remastering. That is very similar uh, to what happened during the first AAD CDs. Mm. Which we were, I presented a few videos on yeah, lately. Uh, yeah, it was a, a kind of, of love to... Uh, uh, a lot of respect to what, uh, exactly. uh, because of from Lou, uh, Lou Orton's ideas in uh, 1963, uh, the cassette was not a cheap. Ex explain uh, who is Lou Orton. Uh, Lou uh, is, uh, <laughs> is the godfather of, uh, of tapes. And uh, the idea was not, ah, okay, we'll manufacture uh, real cheap and uh, trashy crappy support no oh, absolutely yeah true no, it was just uh, the shape <laughs> it was uh, uh you know if you figured out uh, the future that the people uh, that the listening music uh, goes on with the change of evolution of life in our uh, in our daily life and it was a genius and uh, the future then uh, demonstrate that he was a genius, but he didn't say, "Oh, we'll manufacture a crappy support." Why? I remember, tape is the other is people the, treated it like a crappy support. Yeah, but that's that's because you know, uh, for example, uh, the hardcore punk movement in the, from the late seventies and during the eighties, I like a lot. Uh, that kind of community because it's part of my youth I, well you listen to those cassettes and uh, but it, it wasn't just a tape uh, for example the royal bad brains cassette uh, the first album was released just in cassette mm -hmm. and uh, and you know it was the the the, the, uh, the recording that was that was uh, mm, not professional, but not the tape. And uh, that kind of sound of uh, lo-fi sound was the soul, was uh, uh, an artistic uh, uh, view because it described uh, the very, uh, there was no money at that <laughs> time. In the, if, you, if you think to Hermosa Beach, uh, the black flag, uh, but uh, you know, I suppose that a lot of uh, the idea of uh, the tape as a crappy support and uh, awful sound quality, uh, it's because of uh, 
some genre, some music genre, and uh, maybe because of uh, the TDK 46 with uh, the, uh, the stuff on the uh, cheap uh, uh, little boom, uh, boom box. And, uh, uh, but I can say to the vinyl, when I was a child, uh, when we went to the, uh, I come from Sardinia, and we were, uh, when uh, we were a child in the, to the seaside, uh, uh, there was this, um, uh, I don't know the name in English. Uh, it was a way to put the, um, the 45. No, I it's, don't know either, I think. Manja di Kim, no. Uh, era, it was a sort of uh, <laughs> Fono Valigia. Era, mm. it, it was a kind of, uh, in Italy it's Fono Valigia. And the sound was crappy because the, the, the speakers were... Uh, maybe uh, two inches, and so um, the discussion about the quality is for for every support. Uh, we can we can have the same discussion for CD, for vinyl, and for mm. real to real too. Uh, yes. So, and I mean that's something. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to say that unfortunately, I don't. I did not keep my cassettes, so I have this terrible uh, stain on my curriculum <laughs> unfortunately but it was incredible how youtube i must admit youtube brought me back to ask myself but wait a second i love the those early cassettes i tried to get a, a good uh, a good deck tried to get a uh, good pre-recorded cassettes because there are uh, absolutely there are pre good pre-recorded cassettes or simply good virgin cassettes in order to record my own stuff and the magic just took place. For me, it was shocking. I know I've said this in several videos, but this is almost like starting over with the series. So all these aspects, I do want to uh, try to touch them. And clearly, coming going back to what you were saying, we have during the 70s something fantastic, which is cassette culture, which we talk a lot now, but that's something that's coming from the 70s. Also because... C cassettes rapidly in just 10 years became very cheap. So a lot of underground bands were able to do their own little music in their garage. And clearly there was, a, there was also a low quality sound there because they didn't have fancy microphones or preamps or things like that. <laughs> there you go. I, I start to record with a four track Fostex as a Ooh. lot of bands. Well, not bad I mean, in the end. I mean, yeah, I, but, I don't know the sound, but Faustix should be decent. Yeah, but, it, <laughs> but you know, it was something. Uh, no. <laughs> no, there was no uh, no cure about uh, what recording was. You, you got to understand mm. that at that time, uh, I've agreed uh, to record it in a professional studio. Tons of money. Yeah. So when, you, when uh, you know, we, during our youth, and that was the only way, but we had no experience. And that's related to the fact that a lot of uh, noise rock albums, uh, hardcore punk albums, uh, uh, garage, uh, garage rock, garage punk albums uh, sounded that way. Yeah. But, you know, during the 70s, the quality was incredible. Then what happened in 1979, Sonny Walkman? Great invention. I love that so much. I had no money when I was uh, when I was a child, so I had a Panasonic. <laughs> um, and then what happened during the Haiti? During the Haiti's, uh, cassettes explode. You know, the uh, Discogs uh, put out um, a graphic with the. Uh, the kind of support sold here by here. Mm. and the domination of cassettes during the 80s and the first two years of the 90s is incredible. Then, you know, uh, the blank cassettes, uh, the virgin cassettes, uh, during the 70s and the first year of the 80s, uh, the quality was incredible. Then, you know, no, uh, yeah. when, you, when, you have, when, when you start mass production, uh, you know, it's uh, always uh, for, for everything, uh, I suppose so. And the quality was uh, was changing, but with uh, you know, for example, we, we still have uh, we still had Maxell Maxell tapes that were uh, that were great, 
but you had also cheap ones, a uh, pack of five for, uh, I remember, three and a half dollars. So uh, the world that, changes. That, that type of music was shaped by tape, by cassettes. It's incredible. The lo-fi, the, the punk, the grunge. No, no, grunge is coming after. But the punk, especially that, was really shaped by, by the medium, by the tape. And I, think, I find that very fascinating. But, but if you think mm -hmm. that one of the most famous hardcore punk albums of all times, the first one of Bad Brains, was just released in cassette. Incredible. Son of Times. Okay, I just want to add something. Since... Um, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching us, they're, they're thinking, ah, oh, these two old guys, they're nostalgic <laughs> about cassettes and tapes. Forget about it. Okay, I, I just want to say three aspects. I did this in other videos, but once again, I want to highlight everything in these in the series. Three aspects where tape is very present today in the music you are listening on Spotify. You, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm referring to you who are watching this video who thinks cassettes is trash and crap. I read some comments this, this morning. Okay, apart from that. Um, first of all, among the best plugins now in Ableton, Pro Tools, whatever, they're all analog. And a lot of them are tape effects because people want analog. Even even mastering and mixing, they always want that effect because it's just better. Even if you want to get by a preamp, a compressor, you can do that all in digital. But how come professionals who have a little bit of money go and buy that stuff and sometimes vintage stuff to really have the top of the tops? I mean, digital is fantastic and it's very useful, but we can't rely only on that. But okay, so plugins. But something where we find tape, for example, it's a huge culture in the electronic sector now. So many people yeah. are recording their stuff on tape and then converting it maybe back to digital, of course. But they're really giving that special umph, that special taste of that electronic with the, with the harmonics, with the distortion, the saturation, which just creates new sounds. And people, musicians understood that. And I think that's fascinating. Last thing, then I'll, I'll, I'll pass you the, the, the word again. This is something I discovered recently, very interesting, uh, how tape is still being used. Um, I don't know if uh, anybody of you guys who's watching now ever heard about LTO, the Linear Tape Open. Now, you have to know that when you have to record huge amounts of data, people today are not relying on digital. Or, or better, they're relying on digital, but on tape because yeah. there, you can store much more terabytes of data. Clearly, it's a digital format, but it's on tape. I mean, it's their pulses. It's always, uh, as we know, voltage going up and down. In any case, it's it's fascinating that they're not using um, um, drives, solid state drives, to do this because. It would be too expensive and you wouldn't have that much um, space. Instead, these tapes, and we're going to talk about it because I, I think tape also regards data, which I think it's fascinating. It's shocking for me. Did you know about this LTO? Yeah, um, it's incredible. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, in, this, uh, in these last years, mm, there's only one thing that I don't, that I don't like in uh, those discussions. Uh, we cannot, we are not able to uh, talk about analog and digital without getting angry and mad. Yeah, I know. I, it's, and, uh, I can't stand that. You know, I record a lot of my music with Zen Circus in digital. Of course. Using Pro Tools. But uh, we... I know it's it's uh, it's very sad because uh, uh, there is a sort of war, a continuous war, and uh, a lot of time, a lot of times, really, uh, it's something uh, manichaeistic, as we can say in <laughs> Italian. Uh, it's like your uh, your a religion almost. Yeah, I don't know. I can understand this thing because uh, it's uh, a lot of the music we love and a lot of the way sound engineer and mastering uh, 
uh, work nowadays? Well, it's all about the past. And you work on the past with the technology we have now and we are developing now. But as all we can notice, there is, uh, as for LTO, but I mean, I remember the, 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 the DAT, the DAT, digital audio tape. It had a short life because it was between mm -hmm. two great. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's not a war against uh, analog versus digital. Because in the, in the great uh, mm -hmm. recounting studios all around the world, all around the world, it's not just about uh, L.A. or New York or London. It's worldwide. Uh, you have analog gear, pre uh, amplifier, pre-amplifier. Uh, pre if you got uh, the real distressors as a, uh, as analog compression, you use the real one, not the plug-in. In, in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, and uh, uh, you know there is the what is sound engineering and what is mastering, and there is uh, the personal opinion and the taste, and you know. Uh, the way we live the music is the most important thing because we, we're not talking about medicine. We're talking about a real passion. Uh, exactly. What's behind the music is pure passion. It's something which uh, moved this planet, but, you know, it's not medicine. It's not a pharmacy. It's, uh, it's something which uh, uh, gives so much to our life, but it's pure passion. So, Indeed. Uh, um, I just want to say one last thing, because uh, since we're talking about why in the 21st century, there is an article that I read and I was greatly, was greatly fascinated by, which I discovered that even um, uh, Karim found it on, on, online and who sent it to me. And I said, yes, I read that, that same <laughs> article, which I presented in a video. Uh, but I wanted to say it again here, uh, because now we are living a very special moment. I called it, I defined it, the second golden analog age. Why is that? Because now clearly master tapes, the so the main sources of the past uh, albums and music, as we said, are declining, okay? They're losing their magnetic properties. They're losing dB of dynamic, dynamic range. So every year does degrade a little bit and not 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 all formulations we'll we will see that clearly in the in the future episodes in any case clearly there, it's not like a fresh tape of 40 years ago so there is a curve but at the same time there's another curve in this article of the quality of the conversion digital conversion which meet at this point right now okay more or less like already yeah. since five years ago or 10 years ago it's a golden it's a special point we have now plus as I was saying in that video, a lot of reissues of, for example, of jazz, it's just incredible what they're doing. They're finally doing these reissues from the master tapes. This is the last shot where they can put everything in the grooves because yeah. the older editions of vinyl could not do that because people had crappy, crappy turntables they couldn't, and stereo systems, so they couldn't put a lot of low end, a lot of dynamics. They had to compress things. So now it's... Once again, the best moment to enjoy tape, which can be converted to digital. Absolutely, I agree with Karim. It's fundamental. We are not here to say, boo, crappy old digital. No, we have to get both worlds and put them together because they are absolutely uh, compatible. That's, that's the key. That's the key, and uh, your words are truly right because we are living a very special moment, a very special age because uh, uh, we can unify those things and uh, that's what allowed i i think of random master's memories for example of daft punk is one of the best records of the, the last years i agree and it's a unifying analog and digital you know uh, that's true good point. good point that's that's true because uh, when you got money in the uh, in the professional studios and i mean in the real professional studio for example uh, you did a great video on phonoprint in bologna you can find those two things also in mastering and so we're living a very special age and uh, 
I, I think we're very lucky because mm-hmm. we can uh, we can join both things and uh, we can do great things. Well, hopefully people who are watching will be inspired like the, the 18 year old who came to you and maybe we'll start to explore. Okay, so we've reached the end to this first video. We said a lot of things. We touched just a few, the pinnacle, the tip of the iceberg of a lot of topics, which we will explore in depth in the future videos. Don't stop following us, okay, guys? What else can I say? Thank you so much, Karim. We're together in this. <laughs> Are you ready? We're, we're about to start. Uh, as Tra- as Trent Reznor said, <laughs> we're in this together now. Anyway. Indeed. Uh, Thanks so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. And uh, what are you doing? Uh, it's really, I really love the way you approach to the analog world. So thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for everything. No, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Remember, as See I ya. always say, music is born analog. Ciao. Well, guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.